Right, time for futures in focus, all heading for a weekly loss. OPEX move to prolong supply cuts for nine months. Disappointing investors hoping for more. Joining us now from the CME to discuss Tim Evans, chief market strategist at Longleaf Trading Group. Tim, was it as big as a letdown as we're led to believe? Uh, I'd say yes and no. I mean, definitely, uh, I think OPEC kind of came to the gunfight with a knife, so to speak. Um, I mean, really what I feel transpired in terms of market activity is the market began to price in a few days uh, leading up to the meeting that there could be a likelihood that uh, OPEC would look to uh, extend those cuts, but also deepen the cuts. And so when the extension came out and we saw it for another nine months and there were no uh, additional cuts in terms of depth, yeah, I mean, I think the market received that with a little bit of disappointment. Tim, can OPEC now, as a result of this, sustain oil, you know, around 50 years a bottom, 60 years a top? What are your key ranges now? I mean, I would say through the summer season, I mean, I think $50 uh, should be pretty supportive. You know, I, I don't really see, you know, $57, $58, anything above that, uh, you know, barring, you know, some outside event that uh, could impact the market. But... You know, I, I think with the, you know, the expansion of demand you typically see on a seasonal basis uh, during the summer season, that, that should allow uh, inventory levels to uh, draw down some. But we're still going to have an issue as we head into the fall and uh, winter seasons, uh, you know, looking for long-term balance. Tim, how worried are you by, by OPEC's exit strategy? You know, some concern once the nine months is over, we don't know what's going to happen. Are OPEC just going to pump at will? Is that your primary fear when it comes to the OPEC meeting? Well, I mean, my primary fear for the, you know, for bullish prices in crude oil are is the actually the U.S. response to this deal. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think the estimates that OPEC is making in terms of U.S. response, I think it's way too conservative. I mean, we saw uh, U.S. Uh, capacity increase 10 percent year over year. Uh, you know, and I, I think it's fair to expect that we could possibly see another 5 percent uh, which is a, which would be another uh, 500,000 barrels added, uh, you know, to output levels, which obviously is a third of the overall cut, you know. So I, you know, I see that being very problematic, uh, you know, for long-term balance of the market. Tim, let's talk gold. It's been a, a week where we've seen some bullish technical developments with that golden cross. Uh, what sort of upside and how is gold withstanding the prospect of a potential rate hike in June? I mean, I'd say the market behavior up to this point is quite impressive. I mean, if you kind of look at the landscape um, and you kind of consider all the bullish and bearish factors that are driving the price of gold, I mean, the, the list on the bearish side is much longer than the list on the bullish side. So, you know, the fact that we've had that very significant technical development, as you indicated, in the Golden Cross, I mean, I, I think given the environment is, is very impressive. I mean, my view on that is that, you know, gold, I, I think, is pricing geopolitical and, politi and domestic political issues a lot differently than what we're seeing in, in the uh, global equity markets, especially the U.S. indices. Um, so I, I think that has a lot to do with uh, kind of the balance that we've, that we've seen given the bearish developments in gold.